as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's 10 to 9. Now, undergoing treatment for cancer can be a draining and isolating experience, but one woman has set out to try and bring a little lift to those who are living with the disease. Yes, Oa Hackett got this idea after her own breast cancer diagnosis, and now she's launched a charity that sends out care packages for people who are having chemotherapy and re radiotherapy, and she's even received a thank you from the Prime Minister, as Debbie Tobby reports. We are on our way to deliver our 10,000th Little Lifts box. Owa Hackett making a milestone delivery of helpful gifts for breast cancer patients. The charity's efforts now recognised by the Prime Minister. It was a complete shock, but an absolutely welcomed surprise. It's a real honour for the Prime Minister to recognise the hard work of Little Lifts. It was after this photograph taken with her fiancé on her 28th birthday she found a lump in her breast and was later diagnosed with cancer. It felt as if the ground beneath me had just opened up and I was just going into a big hole because it was completely unexpected. She had six rounds of chemotherapy, lost her hair and sense of taste but was given gifts to help her side effects. It really gave me a sense that I was being thought about, I definitely didn't feel alone and that I was loved. And so I used the kindness from my family and friends to inspire the Little Lifts charity today. We've got um, chili oil here. The charity relies on donations, delivers gifts to hospitals in three counties and posts them across the country with different items for different side effects. In our radiotherapy box, we um, put in um, metal-free um, deodorant um, to help with that. Whereas in our chemotherapy box, um, people suffer with loss of taste, hence why we put chilli oil in. Louise Harrison was diagnosed with breast cancer during the pandemic. She now volunteers for the charity after receiving one of the boxes. I remember crying when I opened it because you know, the person that had created this really knew what I was, you know, going through and what I was about to go through because every item in the box was had a purpose. Yeah. This letter from the Prime Minister has now inspired Owa Hackett to make and deliver even more boxes. If I hadn't have had cancer, I wouldn't be doing this. It's about supporting others and spreading kindness, essentially. A little lift making a big difference to thousands of people fighting breast cancer. Debbie Tubby, BBC News. Well, we are joined now by Robin Muir, psychologist and head of Maggie's Cancer Centre in Manchester, and Lindsay Dawson, deputy chief nurse at the Clatterbridge Cancer Centre in Liverpool. Morning to you both. Thanks Good so morning. much for coming in. Uh, Lindsay, how important is it to get these little lift gifts, little acts of kindness when you're going through something it's, that can be so gruelling? It is so important. Um, I mean, I've been a chemotherapy nurse for years and, you know, we've done things like this in the past for our patients and it just gives them that little bit of a pick-me-up. It's such a difficult time for the patients, you know, they're going through probably one of the hardest times in their life, really. And it's just about going that extra mile and, you know, we want to do that with all our patients. That's what we want to do as nurses. So it, it just means so much to them. What are the little things that you've given that have raised a smile? Just those. So we've done things where we give sweets. So certain chemotherapies make you, you know, it gives you a funny taste in your mouth. So we've given gloves because patient gets cold. Um, oh, we've given cups for drinks, teas, coffees, um, reading materials, pens, notebooks. So all little things that they can that they can use. And it takes the mind off it as well. Yes, yeah, it does. Uh, the mind. That's a really good point to bring you in, Robin. How important is it? that people can keep a positive frame of mind when they're going something that's, through something that's so difficult? I think it's really, really important, isn't it? You know, because it gives somebody what they need to kind of overcome, it gives them the endurance that they need. Having chemotherapy, radiotherapy is really quite a challenging thing. It's very technically, it's, there's a lot involved in it, having your blood taken, having the chemo and the radiotherapy. So these gifts actually, I think, really humanise that experience. They remind the recipient that they're a person. Absolutely. At a time when they're being given all this information and yeah. complex yeah. drug names and all of that stuff, you Absolutely. just take it back to basics. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. you do. Yeah. 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 It's something that we see at Maggie's all the time. You know, it's a large part of what we do is reminding people that they're, they're so much more than a cancer patient. They're a person with an identity. 
personality and these gifts, I think, would really help people to feel that. And, Lindsay, have you seen situations where like, somebody's mood has been helped by something like this? Absolutely. I mean, we do things like this at Clatterbridge for our patients, and patients are just taken aback when they're given things like this. They don't expect it, um, but it just makes such a difference for them. Um, and family members, they're so touched as well. So it's not just about the patient, it's what it does for everyone. You know, it's that holistic approach. and. Yeah, it makes such a difference. You say you've been doing it kind of informally for a yeah. while now and, and Little Lift have been doing yeah. uh, what they're doing. I just wonder if this is the beginning of something a bit more joined up, whether we need Absolutely. to do something like this more, more formally, more officially? Absolutely, yes. I mean, we do for things for inpatients um, at Clatterbridge and we do things for carers, um, but we want to roll that out to all our outpatients that are receiving chemotherapy. Um, you know, I've worked in Manchester as well and across Manchester, I know that chemotherapy units um, across the region are doing informal things. So this is something that could be the start of mm. getting it for everyone really across the country. And Robin, in, in your job, um, what advice do you give to perhaps friends and family of a patient who's coming through? What ways can a patient be supported? I, th I think the most important thing is acknowledgement of what's going on. That sort of making it known to that person that you're thinking about them. You, we don't want to put any more burden on that person because there's enough that they're going through at the moment. So actually, little text message just saying, I'm thinking of you, not doing that thing perhaps where we say, let me know if there's anything you can do, because it creates another job for them to do. Yeah. Perhaps just leaving dinner. So what dinner. do you do? What do you say? A text message? But yeah, what, text what message, can you perhaps do? cooking them dinner, leaving yeah. it on the doorstep for them. Perhaps it's those little things, offering to take the, the kids to school for them or babysit the kids, kids when there's an appointment. I think those little acts of kindness, even if it's a bunch of flowers, are really well received, just knowing that you're being thought about. Because I, I, I think we probably all worry a bit, don't we? We've all got friends or family who've been in that situation. Is that Am I going to upset them? Uh, Get maybe in the they, way. they don't want to talk about it, they yeah. don't want it to acknowledge it. What's the, what's the advice? to do something. It yeah. Because that anxiety sometimes means that we don't do anything, we step back and mm. actually better to do something. If we get it wrong, that's fine. Okay. That's life. Yeah, patients always say to me, I wish people would just get in touch, even if they don't know what to say. <laughs> just say, I don't know what to say, but actually I'm here if you need anything. And it's better than just not calling them at all. And uh, ignoring it. Yeah. 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 And in your experience, Lindsay, when people don't know what to say, I suppose, what, what do you do with a patient? I imagine what you do is listen. Absolutely, that's what we're there for. Um, and especially going through treatment, you know, things like this actually start conversations, but... You, we do have them conversations, we just listen to them, we give them advice, we can signpost them to other places like Maggie's. We've always worked closely with Maggie's and Matt Millen. So there's lots of things that we can do, but yeah, we are there to, to help them. And there are lots of groups out there helping there as well, is. aren't there? There are lots of volunteers and groups like in, in Debbie's Beast yes. Little Lift. So, yeah, yes. that's great. Thank you both so much for coming Thank in. You've encouraged us all to talk a bit more. So that's, you. A, that's a good thing. Thank you. Lindsay and uh, Robin, thank you very much indeed.